Got another question here for the synoptic questions playlist. So we're up to number three. And remember, if you do an OCRA, these are paper three questions. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the first part of the question is a rates question. So we've ultimately got to determine the rate equation, calculate the rate constant k with units. So first thing we're going to do is use the data in the table to work out the order of reaction for the three reactants, and that'll get us the rate equation, and then we'll take it from there. So I'm starting with hydrogen peroxide order, so I'm using experiments one and three, so you can see that the hydrogen peroxide's doubled. I've used these two experiments because the iodide and H plus concentrations haven't changed. So the H2O2 concentrations doubled, and the rates doubled. So that's first order with respect to hydrogen peroxide. Moving on to the I minus order, so I'm using ex experiments one and two, so you can see that the hydrogen peroxide's not changed, neither is the H plus, and so I minus concentrations doubled, and the rates doubled, so it's another first order for I minus. And finally for the H plus order, I'm using experiments three and four, so you can see hydrogen peroxide and I minus haven't changed their concentration, H plus concentrations doubled, and the rate is effectively multiplied by one, so it stayed the same. So that's zero order with respect to H plus. So that means the rate equation is rate equals K, hydrogen peroxide concentration, multiplied by I minus concentration. You can put power one there if you want, but I don't tend to do that. So rearranging for K, we get this, rate over the two concentrations multiplied together. So all I'm going to do now is sub in the values for experiment one. Now just be careful with the rate value because you'll notice I've highlighted there all of these rates are multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. So you imagine that might be a common mistake. So 2 times 10 to the minus 6 is the rate for experiment one and they're the two concentrations. So the numerical value of k comes out at 0 0.02 and we'll just do the units now. So I've just replaced the numbers with the uh, units for the rate and obviously the concentration and hopefully you can see we can cancel out the multiple SME cubed on the top with one of them on the bottom. And then the final thing to do is just to bring this up to the top and flip the signs. So the units are dm to the 3, mol to the minus 1, s to the minus 1. Moving on to the next part of the question, so still with rates, explain how the student could determine the activation energy for the reaction graphically using values of K and T. So it's obviously to do with the Arrhenius equation, so that's how the Arrhenius equation is presented on the data sheet. I'm just going to write it out slightly differently. So you can see all I've changed is this part of the equation here, so it looks more like a y equals mx plus c equation, so the equation of a straight line. So to calculate the activation energy, we need to plot the lin of k on the y-axis against 1 over t on the x-axis. The gradient is going to be equal to minus Ea over R. So once we've drawn the straight line, if we measure the gradient and then multiply by R, the gas constant, we've got the activation energy. Part B moves into electrode potentials. So the first thing I'm going to do is number these equations 1, 2 and 3. You'll see why in a second. So we've got to use the electrode potential values to explain why MnO2 is a catalyst for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So if you look at equations 2 and 1, you can see that the standard electrode potential for 2 is more positive than that for 1. So that means the MnO2 will react with the H2O2, the hydrogen peroxide. The way I normally explain this is, because this is more positive, this half equation runs in the forwards direction, and this one runs in reverse. So when you add equations two and one together, so remember that these are gonna be your reactants here, and they're gonna be your products, you get that. Notice the electrons have gone because we're gonna have two electrons on each side of the equation. So we get that overall equation. I'm just going to tidy that up because the H pluses can cancel. So we're left with that. So you'll notice we've made some Mn2 plus ions now. So if we compare equations 2 and 3, you see that 3's electropotential is now the more positive one. 
So this is going to run in the forwards direction and this is going to run in reverse. So the hydrogen peroxide is going to then react with the Mn2 plus ions that we've just made. So when you add those two half equations together, so you've got these here reactants and these here products, we get that and we can tidy this up again because you can see we've got water both sides, we've got H pluses both sides. We get that, obviously you wouldn't normally leave those big gaps there, but you get that and you can see that the MnO2 has been reformed. So it's acting as a catalyst. So moving on to part C now, we've got a little bit of organic chemistry and then it moves into um, equilibrium. So the first thing I've got to do is suggest the structure for this peroxy carboxylic acid. So it's got this extra O in the functional group. So there's the answer there and just keep in the back of your mind, well, what are the maximum number of bonds these atoms can form? Carbon can form four bonds. So you can see each carbon's forming four bonds. I've got a double bond there, so one, two, three, four. Uh, hydrogen can obviously form one bond. The oxygen can form two bonds. So obviously this oxygen here is forming two bonds to that carbon. This oxygen here, one either side, and this oxygen here likewise. And for the final part of the question, we've got to calculate the amount in moles of the peroxyethanoic acid in the equilibrium mixture. So obviously we're going to need to write the Kc expression, but you'll notice I've highlighted that it's a heterogeneous equilibrium. And because of that, we don't include the liquid, so we don't include the H2O, because its concentration is going to be huge compared to these. So the KCA expression is going to look like that. Remember, it's the equilibrium concentration of the products, but obviously we're ignoring the water. So the product over the reactants. Multiply it together, not add it. So then we rearrange to get the concentration, the equilibrium concentration of the peroxyethanoic acid. So it goes to that. And now we just need to sub in these values because they're all in the information there. So that gives us an equilibrium concentration for the peroxyethanoic acid of 0.0925 moles per decimeters cubed. Remember, we've got to work out the amount in moles we've got. So to get the moles, it's the concentration multiplied by the volume that it's in. It's in 250 cm cubed, which has obviously got to be put into decimeters cubed. So that gives a value of 0.0231 moles.